okay, so here you are. You're now in America. You have a birth certificate. You have a few thousand dollars. Yep. And now you have to establish yourself. You have to get an apartment. You have to get a job. And you're also working for the KGB at the same time. So you have yep. to go and do certain tasks for them. No, uh, no, no, no. How not, difficult not, was that? No? No, no tasks in the beginning. Uh, uh, mm. Up until I was totally legal with documentation, the only requirement was to get the documents and also uh, familiarize uh, myself with the playground the playground I was operating in. In other words, get to know the streets, get to know the parks, uh, get to know the subway system, because a lot of what agents do is, is done in the street, like counter surveillance routes uh, or, or uh, spots where you would deposit a container, which is called a dead drop operation. So I spent a lot of time on foot and I got to know New York better than most New Yorkers themselves. So that was an absolute requirement. So two years, no specific task. Okay. But two years later, you finally established yourself. You got an apartment. You got a job. And yeah, you got stable. Uh, so what was really your first few tasks for the KGB once you established yourself? Oh, well, let me tell you, uh, establish is a, uh, is a is somewhat of an exaggeration because my first job <clears throat> was bike messenger. Uh, I, right. you know, I had a, I had a master's degree in chemistry, but that I couldn't take with me. So I couldn't like all of a sudden, you know, uh, apply for a job that requires uh, the skills of a chemist because they would have asked for proof. I didn't have any. I had no resume. I had nothing. I had only me and a backstory that had me work on a farm up until I went to New York. So a bike messenger still is extremely limited with regard to social interaction. You know, I was supposed to make friends. I was supposed to find people that uh, that were possibly material to 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 be recruited. I, that that none of that uh, was was feasible. I had one task that I was able to do while uh, being a bike messenger because it had nothing to do with people. There, uh, in the early 80s, um, uh, Andropov, who was president, uh, and he was ex-KGB, he was the head of the KGB, became the president. Uh, I don't know if in the 80s, he, no, in the 80s he was still KGB. He was in incredibly afraid and the, 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 the entire central committee of the, the uh, Communist Party af afraid of Ronald Reagan. They thought Ronald Reagan was going to start a war. So the KGB started this, this uh, uh, effort called Operation Ryan. And what Ryan meant was that everybody, every agent who operated somewhere in the West had to be on the lookout to see if there's preparation for war going on. So I was assigned a military object, uh, a harbor, uh, and, in uh, in on at, on the coast of uh, New Jersey, uh, it, uh, it's um, I forgot it, that that it, that installation still exists, and I was and I was taught by the way I was taught to recognize the kind of ship uh, I would see from a distance, so I had some some training to do visual observation, and I was supposed to you know stop by there once in a while, and I did, and to to see if anything unusual is going on. Um, that that was a task that I was able to perform, but had, the the moment I joined society, uh, sort of normal society, uh, I had real tasks. And that after three years, uh, I it was decided that I should get a degree. So I went to college, and that is where I met a lot of interesting people, young people who. Uh, who one day would wind up in possibly very um, uh, you know important positions from an, an you know secrecy point of view, and uh, I befriended quite a few of them and uh, also profiled quite a few of them, maybe altogether maybe twenty or so, uh, and sent those profiles to Moscow, uh, and what they did with them I don't know, but these were potential recruits. Right, potential KGB spies. Yep. 
Now, did any of them actually start working with the KGB and start spying know. on the U.S.? I, I don't know. There's one thing. There, uh, one thing that that the KGB did ex exceedingly well uh, compared to uh, uh, other uh, secret services, uh, and that's called compartmentalization. In other words, uh, you get to know only as much information as you need to do your task. And, uh, and uh, so, when it comes to recruiting. There were literally, there were three individuals involved. The spotter who finds a person and says, well, this person could be of interest. The recruiter, that's the second person. That's, and if it's assuming that the, the target is, uh, is willing to operate, cooperate with the KGB, then you have a handler. The, the three do not know one another and, uh, I, as a spotter, never knew what happened next. I have no idea whether there was any recruitment uh, attempted, and certainly not uh, that uh, you know a, uh, an individual started working with the KGB. There was one exception, and and, and I could read between the lines when uh, I one of the uh, people that I pointed out uh, was uh, a Greek student, uh, fr student from uh, Cyprus. And he was radically left, left wing. And that would have made him a really good candidate. Uh, and uh, so I, when, when I went back to Moscow once uh, on, you know, every two years I returned to Moscow for some debriefing and uh, some rest and relaxation. I, they told me, go back. And, and they asked me, where does he live now? I said, I don't know, but I know where his brother lives. So they told me, to ask his brother where, where his, bro his brother went. So, so they, they targeted this fellow. That's all I knew. Okay, so then in 1980, you went back to East Germany uh, for three weeks. And during that yeah, time- Yeah, it was more, no, that was more like six weeks, thank God. <laughs> uh, because as a, as a bike messenger, I wasn't an employee, I was a contractor. So I told, I told my boss, hey, listen, this is summer, it's slow. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go on a, on a tour of the country. Yep, it, that was 80. It was two years after I st uh, came to the U.S. Right. And during that trip, uh, the KGB actually allowed you to marry your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's true. Um, they, they actually knew of her before they even sent me, but we didn't, we didn't have time to, to do the marriage thing and everything. Uh, she knew where I was going and who I was working for, but no, no other details. Uh, initially, they thought uh, they had an idea to send us as a couple, but uh, it turns out that psychologically she, was, she would not have uh, uh, held up under pressure. So, uh, they eventually, when I came back after two years, we got married, and it turned out we also uh, produced a child, right? And so that that suited the KGB very well because now what uh, what they had for me an anchor in Germany, it, it makes it incredibly hard to defect if you have loved ones back home, right? And uh, I loved this woman, and I was I was crazy about having a son, but over time something else happened. But I don't think we're going to get there right now. <laughs> okay, so you go and have a child back in East Germany, and then you come back to the U.S. to continue yep. your work for the KGB, and eventually you move from being a bike courier to working for an insurance company yes. as an IT manager. Yeah, and no, your life started to improve and stabilize. Yeah, initially I, 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 I spent uh, 10 years working as a, as a technician. I, I did programming and database management, uh, and, and I was really good at it. And after 10 years, I became a manager. And I was good at that also, but uh, and programming was more fun because I could use logic. When you operate in management, you are subject to a hierarchy where logic uh, is often a stranger. Okay, so then by 1986, you end up meeting a woman uh, named Penelope, who yeah. I guess was no. a, an illegal immigrant from Guyana. Yeah. Uh, originally, it was just meant, you know, the marriage was just there so she can get a green card. Yes. But then yes. she ended up getting pregnant. Yeah. 
and uh, you guys had a son. No, we had a daughter. Uh, a Deborah, daughter. A daughter. Sorry. And and uh, let me add something that I didn't put in the book um, uh, because it's, I don't know, but uh, uh, I didn't know it when I wrote the book. But I found out that uh, this was a pattern of illegals uh, from from South America or in the Caribbean. They would look for a man, get married in the United States, and then get pregnant. She, she told me she was on birth controls. I don't think it was true, okay? But, you know, I'm, I'm, I, was a, I was still quite ignorant with many, with many, about many things in the United States. Yes, yeah, so, um, yes, in uh, 1987, a child was born and she was called Chelsea, and she's the one that changed my life. So now you have even more of a double life. Yeah. You have a wife and a son in East Germany and another wife yes. <laughs> and a son and in a America daughter. with two different names, yes. two different identities. And, 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 uh, and one was white and the other one was dark, brown eyes, blue eyes. Uh, you know, for people that it might be uh, difficult to understand how somebody can live like that. I, I would not have ever done the same thing like two two marriages in the same country. I had a artificially engineered dual personality. When I was a, in the United States, I was an American, I was Jack. When I went back to Germany, I was German and I was Gegen Albrecht. And the two did not communicate. And I can I can prove that to me even today. If somebody were to walk in here and say something in German, I would immediately switch to German, and I and I wouldn't be. But I but I I can't translate. I can I'm, I'm fluent in both languages, but I but they're not connected. Translation is very mm. difficult. You, and you throw uh, the other language at me, all of a sudden, uh, you know, it it it. There are different sections of the brain that that uh, that operate in in these two languages. <laughs> 